Hi everyone, it's Michelle here. Happy New Year. I hope that you're all having a, a fabulous start to 2016. I am preparing for a craft fair at the beginning of next month, so I have been yeah, creating lots and lots of books, but I have I had started to make this video a while ago and I keep moving things around my desk and so today I decided I'm not going to move anything anymore and I'm going to finish filming this. This is take two, which is why everything's a bit grubby. <laughs> <laughs> I got visited by a bee, so I had to get the bee out, and then now I have to start again. So, a, um, here we are. I wanted to share with you the tools that I use to make my books. So I had a few different questions, so hopefully I will cover them all off in this vid. So these are things that I have used in the uh, four... I've been creating paper crafting for about four years uh, and in that time these are things that I have used and used over and over again so they have been well worth the money for me. One of the first things that I bought was the Tim Holtz Distress Ink and the very first one I bought was the Vintage Photo and this is it. It is, as you can see, been well used. So that was um, number one. I have actually bought another one to make sure I've got I'm well covered and also I like to keep them really juicy so I use uh, the reinkers when they get a bit dry and I will just keep them nice and um, juicy to use so that it's not quite such hard work so the vintage photo the gathered twigs is also vitally important to me and my new addition is the ground espresso that is a beautiful rich color very like what you see in the picture depending on what your colors like so those guys are vital and what I use with them is I have one of the little applicators that uh, you've probably seen um, and these of course come with the replaceable ink sponges I bought and buy several packets of them and I sent my lovely husband off with one of these sponges and he bought a long piece of wood from the hardware chopped it all up and made me a whole stack of them so I have got lots and lots of them I do have uh, one for every ink pad I own <laughs> I just had to it just seemed normal except that I do have some that have not got any labels and I think of those as my grunge ones and when I can't be bothered reaching for the other ones I'll just grab these and use these for grungy projects so those are vital for um, virtually everything that I make has some distress on it somewhere. But for a permanent ink, I use um, archival and I use the black predominantly for stamping. And I also use for stamping this one, which is potting soil, which is a really lovely dark brown. And then the other one I use a bit of is coffee. So those three are my top three archivals that I use on virtually everything. But I'm sure those are personal preference, but they are fabulous. The other thing, of course, I use a lot of is the Distress Stains. And again, my top colours are Vintage Photo to gather twigs and then the walnut stain so these three I have used a lot I haven't yet got the um, ground espresso in the the stains but it will be joining the family soon and then this is how I um, I just store them in a little plastic box and I have just put the labels on the top I can't really always tell quickly so I have a little coding system where I just use the initials to remind myself of what I'm doing so those are my inks which are used in virtually every project. Um, for the actual book binding, the sewing, I use this would be one of my most important tools. I don't ever sit down to make a book, to sew a book together um, without bringing out my Tim Holtz um, ideology ruler it's a centering ruler so there's a zero there so it means that whenever I'm going to make something I grab my book and if I want to know where the center is I just line it up until I find my center and then that helps me to get everything as close to straight as it can be I haven't got a very naturally straight um, line and you know my eye so some people have got got an eye for for these things uh, this is as good as it gets for me without this I would be like that so this is very um, 
fabulous just totally fabulous the I started off with using these two as my um, pokey tool so this is what I use to make all the holes in my book the Tim Holtz pokey tool and I also have the Tim Holtz die pick which is designed to take the paper out of the little holes in the Tim Holtz dies uh, and I use that sometimes as well for poking the holes in the spine of the books uh, I have splashed out recently and bought a proper needle tool and that one was from Gordon Harris if you're in New Zealand but um, it's lovely and it is actually lovely it's proper it's a nice sharp one and so that's really good as well um, the other thing that I use on every book when I am making them is these giant paper clips and they are about four inches long I got these on sale and I'm not sure where you would get them but just if these interest you keep an eye out for them I use them to hold all the papers together when I'm going to sew the papers into the book so I find these really really useful and um, as I said I use them on every book that I have that I make I now use this as my thread and I use this on virtually every book so I've only got the one color but it is um, lovely waxed linen thread and I got that from Volcano Arts which I will put a link down to them below I also bought this online from Volcano Arts and this is their um, book binding needle so that's their website there and you can see it's just a needle um, with a slightly blunted tip and also quite a nice big eye I'm not sure how well that's focusing so that's what they look like that's the binding needle so um, those are those are all I use I have got a few other needles in there but to be honest that's all I use now that I've bought those ones so I love those talked about that da, 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 da. adhesive I use several different adhesives uh, I use a wet adhesive for when I'm making my journals as opposed to a dry adhesive if you don't know what the difference is this is a dry adhesive so it will always be like that it will stick things together but it will never change and it become more permanent whereas if you use a wet adhesive when you put it on it will stick and it will dry so I use these two these are my two main favorites scotch quick dry adhesive and glossy accents I use the glossy accents particularly when I want um, the extra glossy finish uh, and I also use it as an adhesive so those two are very good I also use um, I've got some matte medium and different things like that that I use for other things but those are my main adhesives that I have on every project the other thing that I have and and use all the time and would replace if I ever lost them is a bone folder and I love this one by EK Success I don't know if they still make it because I actually thought I'd get another one if I found one um, I really like the fineness of the end I have this here as an ex example just to show you the difference between the two I use this one if I want to score something so if I've got my um, cutting board I can just chuck a piece of paper in here and I can score in there like so whereas this one being fatter I can't get that into that groove but this one I will use if I am wanting to just to score a piece of paper like so so they're both useful but they just do different things for me um, having said that I will show you my cutting board this is my second cutting board my original one I'm coming back was this one and it is the five inch you can see the one of the problems I had with it probably I've lost virtually all the the lines so when I decided to replace it and splash out this has got the, the fold out I decided to go up to the six inch which has got that and then this goes right out to a 15 inch there so it is fantastic and I love it but sadly the only thing here that's just my to remind me I was cutting something um all the all this top layer is all bubbling up which I was a bit sad about because I want it to be pretty um what other this is probably another thing that I would be devastated to live without and this is the big bite so it's the 
crocodile big bite from um, We Are Memory Keepers and it's um, totally fantastic. So some of you may have the handheld one and if you haven't got either and you're deciding between the two, probably everyone will have a preference. For me, I decided on this one because this does everything the handheld does but it has the advantage of that extra length. So if I need to, to punch a hole right into the middle of, of the page, I can do that here. So I certainly, if I had some had the money and I could afford both, I'd buy both. Go and buy both. Um, other thing that is um, vital for me is the We Are Memory Keepers Crocodile Corner Chomper. I absolutely love this. I would... Um, not sure if they're still making all the different ones that are around, but I would have them all if I could. They are fantastic, and I do all my corners with this one, even though I have broken one side of it. So it's supposed to have two pieces like that, two little guides, and then you put your card in, in case you've never seen one. Put your card in here, I put chipboard in, whatever I'm using, and it will chomp two different sides of corner. So absolutely no problem whatsoever to get through chipboard. So totally fantastic tool. The um, other thing that I cre use, and I just as a little tip, um, in case you're starting out, this is something that I've started using all the time and now I don't stamp without. And it's a mouse pad that I got from the $2 shop probably the dollar store, the 99 cent store, wherever you happen to be. Um, and I always do my stamping on this now. I find that it gives me a much better result. Um, I think just having that little bit of cushion and ensuring you've got a bit of give when you do the stamping. So um, totally love that. I was going to also tell you about... Oh, so the other thing is that I use and that you've probably seen me use is craft card. So I use a lot of craft card in my work and the craft card that I use comes in two weights and I buy it in two weights, 140 GSM and 230 GSM. The one that, the brand that I use is a New Zealand product. So you, I can't, there's no point me telling you uh, any more than that. I'm sure that wherever you live in the world, you will find something equally fabulous in a craft card that you use. I will double that up if I want it thicker, I will colour it, ink it, paint it, oil it, all sorts of things that's um, vital. And then the chipboard that I use if I'm trying to um, create a um, book cover is um, a medium weight natural chipboard, so just a stock standard. It doesn't actually have a brand name on it, so I don't know, can't tell you the secret of that one. So those are the, some of the most important things for me that I use. The only other thing which doesn't necessarily have anything to do with bookbinding, but it is something that I use on all my books, is I make virtually all my own tags. And so these are the Tim Holtz Alterations um, dies. I've got the tag and book plates, tiny tabs and tags, and tag and die. And these are... Um, yeah, these are just vital. I couldn't, I wouldn't have a tag anywhere in my life hardly if I didn't have these. So I totally and I completely love these. So those are just my favourite things for creating books and I think that's about it. The only other thing I haven't talked about is paper uh, and that's kind of a whole video all on itself. The short answer to what paper I use is I use anything I like. And everything I like so uh, there's not probably many papers that I wouldn't use I do tend to go to matte paper and not use uh, something with a gloss to it that would be about the only thing that I would say <laughs> that, I would, that I don't use so if you want more information about papers then as I said I can um, do that in a separate video but that is the basic uh, intro to what I use and maybe I think I covered maybe even why I used it but these are things that I love as I said these all would have to be replaced if I lost them <laughs> if they wandered off and left me they would be vitally important to be replaced so I hope that is of help to the lovely ladies that asked the question and hope you're all well my friends and I will see you soon. Bye for now.